You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present The Apple of His Eye by Tricia Brecher with... Lucy Ailey Parker, Paul Francis, and Karen Singer. He really has got a gun. I thought he dodged national service. He did. Black feet and labyrinthite are something to do with the inner ear. It was his granddad's. A pistol from the Great War, the rotten one. Has he ever used it? Couldn't find the catch. And I buried his bullets. Then let me hurt him a bit. He'll be hurt soon enough. So you are coming with me. I've got the car. I don't fancy the steam train. It's murder these days. I still need to tell him. Leave a note. It's our anniversary. Why do you think I'm down here? For the ice cream. I hate ice cream. I thought you liked ice cream. Oh, maybe a 99 with a flake. When we get to the Legion, promise you'll stay in the car. If he touches you... You've got to promise. Please, stay in the car. If he even looks at you funny, I'll... Promise. If he hurts you in any way... Interview recommenced at 3.51pm. Detective Inspector James enters the room. What do you know about Webley Mark VI pistols, Mrs Steele? I'm sorry? Webley Mark VI self-extracting revolver. Standard weapon for British soldiers in the First World War. Favoured by officers, airmen, naval crews, boarding parties, raiders, machine gun teams and tank crews. Perfect for the trenches. Oh. This continued after 1923. Right. So why was a bullet from the aforementioned device found inside your husband? Ken? Yes, your husband. Ken? We've confirmed his identity. Poor Ken. For the purpose of the tape, Detective Inspector James is showing the suspect a photograph of the Webley Mark VI pistol of the type used to kill her husband, Ken. I always thought he drowned. He did drown. After he was shot. He was a terrible swimmer. All arms and legs, never moving forward. Took Joanne to the pool once, ended up using her armband. Does the gun look familiar, Mrs. Steele? No, not at all. Look carefully. Have you ever seen that gun before? No. I mean, I've seen him in films. The kind of thing you get in Agatha Christie, I suppose. You like a murder mystery, then? I never was keen on Hercule Poirot. Irritating little John Darm. I suppose he had to be. That was his job. Mrs. Steele. You have no recollection of this gun ever being in your husband's possession? No, never. Not even in his grandfather's house, when the old man was alive? My husband wouldn't let me throw anything away. We've still got all those mahogany cabinets. Can't get furniture like that now. If we were to search your house, we wouldn't find a pistol fitting this description? Joanne's there with the kids. If we were to get a warrant to search your house after they'd gone, we wouldn't find a Webley Mark VI. There's nothing in that house. Nothing but old clothes. I couldn't bring myself to take them to the charity shop. Not mine. Not anyone else's. Always a chance somebody might wander in wearing them. Exactly. A ghost. I've got enough of those. What do you mean? I'm surrounded by dead men's clothes all day. All the little knick-knacks, random saucers and packs of playing cards. That's all that's left, you know. Of what? Of us. I always remember what Barbara Streisand said. Barbara Streisand? I read her biography. We get a lot of biographies in. You can sit there all day reading about other people's lives. Better lives. And what did Barbara Streisand say? How she loved being in the movies. To prove she existed. What's that got to do with donations to a charity shop? She's a bit of a collector of antiques, you know. Plenty of money, admittedly, but she knows her stuff. She said, and I'll try and get this right, she said, 
They have proven their immortality. They know something I don't. Do you know something we don't? Antiques are survivors, you see. All that life we live, all those words and thoughts. And all that's left is a comb and a vegetable peeler. A comb and a vegetable peeler. That's sad, Mrs Steele, but can we get back to the Webley? It's a metal and plastic mocking us with their longevity. That metal won't last. And plastic will. Thousands of years, they reckon. The bullet was lodged in Mr Steele's back. Oh dear. He wasn't an athletic man, was he? No. So he couldn't have shot himself? In the back? I doubt it. Then he must have been shot by someone else. Suppose so. You suppose so? I wasn't there. You weren't anywhere near the beach at Dimchurch on the night of the 27th of July, 2012? I was sleeping in my bed. And you weren't angry at all? Why should I be angry? Wasn't it a special day? No more than any other day. Didn't you say it was your birthday too, Mrs Steele? The 27th of July? That old thing. <laughs> Who wants to be reminded? I'd be devastated if my fiancé didn't get me a present on my birthday. It's a little engagement ring. We're saving up for the mortgage. Very sensible. Old curtain ring will do. Bit of costume jewellery. Plenty in the cabinet of the shop. Nothing more than 20 quid. Joanne wanted a big rock. That's what they say, isn't it? On those TV programmes where the bride goes mental. Poor old Michael. Had to have something decent on her finger before she'd say yes. So sensible. But you weren't upset when Ken forgot your special day? We never did presents, but I do like a little card. Well, did he give you a card? More than his life's worth. I'm oh, sorry. I forget sometimes. You forget your husband's dead? I didn't know he was dead, not till you told me. You forget he's not there? You ever live with a man? Of course you have. The fiancé. I mean, you must have spent time together, even if you're not living under the brush, over the brush, living in sin, whatever it is it's called these days. I'm familiar with men. She said it. So you'll realise one day that you haven't spoken to each other in hours. Not just when the telly's on or if you're driving in the car, when you're not in the same room, pottering as if the other one's not there. That's a bleak picture of marriage. There's always your turtle doves, the ones who can't keep their hands off each other, the ones who reckon it's electric when the other one walks in. Were you jealous? Of what? The turtle doves. I mean, did you know any turtle doves? Brenda and Tommy Fantoni? He took off in his milk float years ago. But they had that affection, didn't they? That spark. Him riding on his motorbike, her clinging on behind. She never rode on the back. Speeding away into the night. The romance of the road. Where's Brenda now? Lung cancer, a couple of years ago. No, I'm sorry. She was a good girl. Best friend I ever had. I told her to pack in the fags. Do you ever miss your husband? Sometimes, when the bins need taken out. He was always good at civic activities. Did you have anyone to talk to when your husband disappeared? They offered me grief counselling. Grief counselling? Nowhere to start. But you had Brenda. Till she got sick. No one else? Joanne didn't want to talk. Michael muttered something about going to the GP. Kids were lovely, though. Two little babies to cuddle, till they got too big. Could I use your facilities, please? I'll escort you. She needs a female. I'm sorry, I meant we'll get an officer to escort you. That girl was lovely before. So smart in her uniform. All at 22. Interview suspended at 4.10pm. Mrs Steele leaving the room for a comfort break. Come on then, old timer. Who done it? Well, she's got a cast iron alibi. Hardly. She was in bed alone. Well, none of the neighbours saw anything. They never even saw Ken leave. It's the land of the dead down on that caravan park. What do they call it? Shangri-La. There's no forensics on the bullet? Been in the water too long. Then we'd better let her go. She hated him. I hated my ex-wife for a while. Doesn't mean I topped her. She hasn't been found washed up on Dimchurch Beach. Yet. 
I'll make a note of that. Sometimes you've just got to go on instinct. Don't tell them that at Hendon. Hasn't she suffered enough? To put away the old man? Well, don't you think she would have told us by now? You've been pretty hard on her. Too hard? Hard enough. Well, you can't say she's not honest. Most people would have tried to paint a pretty picture. I'd try to paint a pretty picture. How's it going with the old ball and chain? He wants to go to the Maldives on honeymoon. I said to him, Chris, we can't spend all our money on two weeks in paradise. He said, no, you don't want to spend your own money. Get the family and friends to cough up for a wedding present. A wedding present? Everyone's doing it, apparently. Instead of a gift, they put money towards the honeymoon. Well, I suppose everyone's got a cruet set. What's that? Well, you don't need one. I'll get you a spice rack. I hate foreign food. This way, madam. Interview recommenced at 4.14pm. Mrs. Steele re-enters, Detective Inspector James and Detective Sergeant Gray still present. Are you all right now, Mrs. Steele? As well as can be expected. Is there anyone else you'd like us to inform? Of the death? No. Thank you. I can tell the committee. Probably have a drink up in his honour. Will you have to be there? Got to keep up appearances. What will you do now? Ring Michael, I suppose. He'll pick me up. He's a good boy. I mean, about the house. Ask Joanne to move in. Her and the kids can have more space and a garden. They'll make a mess. That's what kids are for. I mean, they'll make a mess of the garden. Digging things up, ruining your decorative border. I never was all that green-fingered. Where will you go? In case you need to reach me. Maybe Benidorm for a couple of weeks. Joanne says you can get karaoke out there any time, night or day. It's almost a religion. You sing? When pushed. Bit of Campari helps. Do you wish to say or add anything to what has already been said? I don't think so. Interview concluded at 4.16pm. Is it over? You might want to put Benny Dorm off for a while, at least till after the inquest. Don't worry, Mrs. Steele. There'll be family liaison officers to help with the funeral. At least he's back with his mum and his granddad. I suppose that's a comfort. I have labelled the master tape and signed and dated it. Detective Sergeant, would you please sign it? And then Mrs. Steele. I am now sealing the master tape in a plastic bag. It will remain sealed unless further evidence comes to light. I just need to get the form to explain how the recording would be used. I should have brought it in. My apologies. She's new. Thank you. Just learning the ropes. You don't know what you've done today. I think I do. Am I allowed to hug you? I shouldn't have thought so. Is it because you're about to retire? Is it that obvious? No. Then why? I think you've suffered enough. Who was it? Alan? You don't think it was me? You're too calm, too considered. I'll take that as a compliment. Was it Alan? Or someone down the Legion? You won't tell. I haven't told so far. Here's the form, Mrs. Steele, explaining the procedure. Thank you. Can I go now? We appreciate your time, madam. Will you be all right? Don't worry. Michael look after me. He's a good boy. Chris wants kids. Reckons they'll look after us in our retirement. Chris? My fiance. Oh, Chris. About six foot, wears the same uniform as you. Sorry, yeah, Chris. Terrible reason to procreate. You never know what you're going to get. Exactly. Oh, let's go down the pub. I could murder a pint.
in the apple of his eye, Lucy Ailey Parker was Yvonne, Karen Singer was Detective Inspector James, and Paul Francis was Detective Sergeant Gray and Allen. Artwork for the production was by Sheila Jackson. Technical presentation was by John Fryer. And the play was written and directed by Trisha Brecher. The Apple of His Eye is an audio production for Political Art.